Hi, friends. Hi, friends. We're back. It's episode 49 of The Brunch and Judge. On the cusp of 50. (laughs) If my sister were listening, I'd be like, you hear that, sister? On the cusp (laughs) of 50. (laughs) Nothing but love. Love my sister. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are your hosts. I'm April. And I'm Claire. And this week, our topic is cults. Cults. (laughs) (laughs) One of our favorite topics, to be sure. There's so yes. many good culty cults out there. Oh, love it. Love, 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 love. Okay. But first. If you're in a cult, I apologize. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You probably are already in a cult. Just, you don't know yet. That's okay. We'll help you. <laughs> we'll help you realize you're in a cult. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> but first, Claire, what are you judging this week? I'm judging myself because, okay, I used to read all the time when I was a kid. You know mm-hmm. this. We, oh, same, that was what that's same. what we would what we did when we Hours, would go yeah. on trips and listen to music and read. And I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit. Adulting <laughs> not a little man. bit I a did, lot. Yes, I'll be honest. I did not meet my Goodreads goal last year. Just not enough time. Yeah, and I've fallen into. TV shows are easier. Movies are easier. It can be kind of mindless. You don't really have to think about it. Yeah. No, anyway, it. so it all start. Well, I had started this book last year in June. We went on vacation. And um, it was a pretty thick book. You've read it. The Natchez is burning. Yes. Just, highly recommend. April got, me, April got me a signed copy by Greg Isles. I love so Greg excited. Isles. He's got a new book coming out on my birthday this year. What? <laughs> So I was a little over halfway finished with Natchez Burning. And finally I was like, okay, I'm going on vacation Mm -hmm. in between Christmas and New Year's. I'm going home, you know, vacation. I mean, not work, just going to my parents. Right, right. That was it. I wasn't going anywhere else. And I was like, okay, I've got a few days without the children before my brother showed up with his brood. And um, I was like, I'm going to try to get this done. I'm going to finish it. And so I did. And doing that, I was like, oh, I've forgotten what just like sitting down and reading and really reading was Mm. like, you know, I had gotten away from that. I hadn't done it in so long. I mean, I have read books, but not like just, you know. (laughs) Where where you're like focusing on, I'm reading this book and I'm going to read. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, I'm reading, you know, I'm in it. And um, so I finished it. Yay me. Um, I was listening on Audible to Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton, which oh, I heard is, deli- is delicious. It's good. It is delicious. I'm picking up my coffee at the same time. It's delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. Listening to him read it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I really did enjoy it, though, because it's just almost like he's sitting there telling you these stories about him getting into acting and his mom taking him to all these auditions and the Harry Potter thing. And I mean, there were several really good, like little anecdotal things Mm -hmm. that, you know, that kind of stuff. And I thoroughly enjoyed listening to that. And I finished that. I finished listening to that. Um, I read the shark smut novel that my boss accidentally bought me for Christmas. And I was like, yeah, like, this is what I remember what this was like now. And so then my sister-in-law gave me, uh, a Court of Thorns and Roses by mm-hmm. Sarah J. Moss. And she was like, oh, you know, you'll probably like this. You know, because I, you know, told her about the smut no- the shark smut novel. And actually, she has started her own podcast with a couple of her friends called The Rainy Day Smut Brigade. <laughs> so if any of you like smut novels, go check them out. Great. Because... <laughs> we'll, we'll post the, the link to, to their podcast in our notes so that they're easy to find. Yes. And um, so she was like, here, you should read this because she read it. My brother read it. You know, Mm -hmm. my brother usually reads a lot of the stuff she reads. 
like she'll just be like here read this because i read it kind of thing your brother reads smut novels <clears throat> well not smut but this one this one's like, <laughs> oh, like oh okay this not, one's not real smut reading this was other like... <clears throat> things not not her smutty yes. books okay okay I yeah, just, yeah i was yeah, like yeah. wait what well because he read this court of thorns and roses mm-hmm. and um she had an instagram post and he was like i don't know it's like beauty and the beast <laughs> it's very much and it very much is it's like beauty and the beast meets hunger games that's the best way i can describe mm-hmm. it I know this this book has been around for a while. Yeah, um, Akatar got... is uh that's how I yeah. see it references Akatar. It's Akatar, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh yeah, so she gave that she left it with me and I read it in less than twenty four hours <laughs> because <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Amazing. I started it, it was awful. I started it like after midnight and read until four in the morning. And then went to bed, slept for like, I got up at like 930 and then got some coffee and then read it, you know, and we even had our little, like April and I had a little conference call to mm-hmm. talk about stuff for the new year. So we had that, but I still finished it by like six o'clock that night. Amazing. Like I just was like, I got sucked in. It had been so long since I've been sucked in like that hard. Yeah. So then, you know, this past Tuesday, I immediately went out and bought books two and three. <laughs> And now I have spent, like, I've been up every night this week until, like, one in the morning reading these books because it's, like, I have, mm-hmm. you know, so little time. Like, I read for, like, maybe 30 minutes on my lunch break because mm-hmm. drive time and all that stuff. And then, like, if I'm not working my part-time job, I'd come home and read, but I work my part-time job a lot right. this week. So, but, yeah, last night, stayed up till, like, almost three in the morning reading this book, and I'm almost done. But it's just, I'm judging myself because it's like, why did I get away from this? <laughs> because yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. I get it time and adulting and all that, but still, it's just like, I, I need to it, make more time. It's a little bit of, I mean, because I go through um, phases where like nothing is the book I want to read. So like, I kind of, I don't right. read yeah, as I much because I'm not sucked in as much. Um, so if you have one of those, and you get out of the habit of reading because you just, I can see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously I work at a library, so I read a, a lot still, but I, right. <laughs> I, uh, I did not meet my Goodreads goal last year and I decided to just accept it and embrace the reality that my life is chaos and that that's okay. <laughs> well, and I mean, I kind of, you know, I went, you know, kind of like what you do, the 52 books. like Right. Book a week. I'm like, it's my goal. Maybe I reach it. Maybe I don't. It's okay. Right. So that's what I set for myself. Mm-hmm. I started doing good reads again. I haven't done that in a hot minute. So I started doing <laughs> that again. So now it's like I've got like my actual like hard copy books that mm-hmm. I read. I've got a list of books that I'm listening to on Audible. Like anytime I'm in the car, I try to like listen. Like right now I'm listening to Home Before Dark by Riley Saker. Oh my God, which it's is, the best book. I feel like it's more terrifying it's to so listen terrifying. to it than actually read it. I don't know. I scared, I scared like myself my to car. death reading it, and I don't. I know. Live I'm alone. like in my car driving, <laughs> mm-hmm. and this one part happened, and I was like, "Oh God, what? no!" It was just like I'm like terrifying myself while I'm driving. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's great, but anyway. So yeah, I'm just judging myself for like getting away from that because I kind of forgotten how great it was to just really get sucked into something and you because then it's like I mean you know like movies and stuff I watch them and it's like I'll talk about them with people but it's like I don't know what it is about these books but it's like I've been thinking about like all the time Mm -hmm. what's What's this you know (laughs) blah 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 like it's constantly like running through my head and I don't know it's because I'm reading it you know I don't know there's something a disconnect between like visually and reading you know or like watching and reading to me it's that uh, when you're reading, you get to create what it looks like, so it means more. That's true. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And like for me, I, I, I'm sure I've mostly only ever read cis white main characters because it's predominantly what's out in the world. But I've right. read things that are not cis white main characters. But no matter who I'm reading, it's always me who's the main character <laughs> because it's just like. You know, maybe I'm a boy because the main character is a man, but like it's always me <laughs> as the main character because it's you're like living it, and so I like always create yeah. stuff, um, especially when it's like a first person. Mm-hmm. So kind of and yeah. It, so when it's um, particularly exciting, it just stays in your brain. I completely understand that because 
Claire, in in honor of your Shark Smut book, <laughs> I decided that I too would read a smut book. And I, 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 I work at a library, so I did the only thing I knew, and that was to Google it and look for like some good wrecks, you know, for right. Smut, yes. There's a lot of different things out there, so. I don't think I'm into the whole like mafioso level smut, which is super popular right now, uh, where okay. there's like vying gangs is not the right word because it's more mafia specific, <clears throat> but right. But like it's you know, and there's like, there's a lot different of different families. And yeah, that kind of thing. and I'm just like I don't I don't think I want to go there. That feels too dark. But I, I want something that's not Bridgerton because it's very it's very <laughs> endearing. Really, I love Bridgerton. Don't get me wrong. Yes. Um, but like I wanted something a little bit um wicked. We'll go with that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I read some stuff and some like summaries and I picked one at random that I thought would suit my desires because the premise is that it is a erotica novelist writer who is trying to have her next book published through a more literarily respected publisher. Oh, and okay. So um, it's a deal that she works with this guy who's an editor on her next novel. Um, and they have to get it rewritten in six weeks because he's getting ready to move to like the LA offices or whatever. They're in New York, oh, okay. I guess. And so I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds... It sounds like it's going to be a little bit kinky, you know. All right, I'm here for it. We'll try it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like, I I just read, like, the a sample on Libby to see if this is what I like, which is always a mistake because then you can't stop. Right. And yes. Uh-huh. It's actually um, really uh, into BDSM and really heavy on the dominant submissive thing. And oh. mostly, <laughs> mostly it comes out in like the excerpts of stuff that she's writing and not her relationship with other people. Uh-huh. But then plot twist turns out she's a dominatrix, but only because she was the submissive to this guy who is named like Soren, who turned out to be like a Jesuit priest. And like, he's like the biggest what? sadist of them all. Like it is the most <laughs> banana bonkers thing, but like. I I've not ridiculous. even heard of all of the things that are happening in this book. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I can't stop reading it. Like I, I've, I've committed to the it. name of it. It's called the siren. Um, I'll have to the tell siren. you it's by, um, there's another one that I wanted to read. That was also, don't judge me. I, I, apparently I have not a kink and interest. It's, it's, it sparked curiosity. In which this girl who was thinking about becoming a nun wanted to find out what she would be missing if she became a nun. And to figure that out, it was with oh, another God. priest or something. And I'm like, the <laughs> fuck is this? So the fact that this guy turned out to be like a oh, Jesuit God. priest would just made me laugh hysterically. Because <clears throat> I was like, uh, I, all right. Um, it is by, it's thinking about it. Dude, ah, no, stop. By Tiffany Rice. Okay. The Siren. R E I S Z. Okay. Um, uh, it's a lot. Um, like it's it's heavy <laughs> on like, don't get me wrong, pain, pleasure, paradox is intriguing to me, but like I'm I'm like a how to build build a sex room level, not <laughs> right. Not what's happening right. in this book where it's like <laughs> In one scene, oh god, sorry, this is not appropriate for children. Okay, if there are any children around, hot cup earmuffs, earmuffs, like super earmuffs. Um, right, because like in this one scene, uh, the the dominant is like pick a number between one and five, and they pick five, and then they get like the like the crop whip or whatever, like on their back shoulders and then down their back, and then like. A couple of times and then on their ass and then like on their thighs right below their ass. But five wasn't just the number of hits. It ended up being like the number of orgasms they were going to have and like God. how many fingers get shoved inside and just oh, like God. all of these things. And I'm like, holy <laughs> fucking hell, God, I can't, I can't no. process this. This is my poor little vanilla white brain over here is dying. 
So I don't know what's going to happen because last night I read like not that much, like a couple of scenes and a lot of sex things happened with lots of different people. And I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I just like, I don't, I don't, this is not what I meant to read for my first foray into like deep smut or whatever. Right. This is where we are. My coworker is big into romance novels. And I feel the this same way she does. This is not a romance like, novel. No, no. But we're she's big into romance novels. And she's like, yeah, you know, the smut stuff is fine. But I want something that's got a decent story. Right. You know, behind it. Well, and this so, one, like, so it's not just like does. sex scene after sex scene after sex scene. Just for the hell of it. But she's reading a book now that's got like a reverse harem situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with that came like up a the lot woman in descriptions and i'm like is this yeah. a trope whoa yes apparently it is <laughs> and so then she was touched. telling me she was telling me about one scene that she had read and just heard like describe i was like oh my god <laughs> like are you know talking about it's just i don't know mm-hmm. it's just like like you said my little vanilla white brain is just, just like, like like you said, repressed. Well, I don't know. I whatever you want to call like, it. I, I never read Fifty Shades of Grey because the whole concept nope. of that just seemed fucking ridiculous. Right. But now that I've read this, I'm like, that's got to be vanilla in comparison to the fuck I'm reading right now. Tell me what you're reading holy now. Holy hell, right? Batman. I was not prepared for this. No one, <laughs> no one prepared me. But I can't not know how it ends because does she finish her novel? Does she get it right. rewritten? Does the editor end up agreeing and signing off so that it gets published? Do they get together? Does she instead get together with the 19-year-old houseboy that she has that she doesn't know is in love with her, but oh, she's in love God. with him, and it's so complicated? Or does Soren, who was once her dominant, is that who she ends up with? Because that's the Jesuit toxic. Priest. And like, <laughs> yeah, who, There's by so the way, much. like, it's so, it's, and there's so many, like, weird things, like, He's the main, he's like the the king dominant of all of the dominants or whatever. But like, he never had sex with anyone ever because he took his vowel, his vowels, not vowels, his no. vowels seriously. <laughs> except for the, the main girl who he fell in love with when she was 15, but he refused to like get into anything with her until she was 20. And I'm going, See, I don't know like how so to feel about all of this. There's all sorts of things happening. And I, I don't know. know. Like, it's all so complicated. <laughs> it's just like, and I'm over here going to make like, your head explode. Yeah. I'm like, I love Spencer. I'm fine. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I'm like, huh. I, if I ever thought my love life was complicated, boy, Lord. You're like, boy, was I wrong. Yeesh. But um, yeah, so I'm learning new vocabulary and um, it's been, it's been a journey. It's yes. A journey. But all that to say, I'm reading it secretly on my Libby app because I don't want all the people on Goodreads to know that I'm reading it because everyone is on Goodreads right now <laughs> with all their New Year's <laughs> resolutions. And I'm it's like, true. I don't want right after I read Louise Penny's Still Life, <laughs> the first novel with Inspector Armand Gamanche. Um, to be like, I read this really, you know, great detective story, and now I'm reading the smuttiest <laughs> smut of all the smut. In the which smuttiest I'm smut like, of all the smut. Boy, God. It's like, no, I don't need, like, my well, sister-in-law see, we to did see our... reading that. Lord. Right. Well, we did the episode on the Fae, and that was part of why mm-hmm. Allie was like, here, you should read this. You know, like, this is, this, all this Akatar. Well, it's all about and, and that's, the high fang and That's a whole shtick, too. Like, I, I have been sorely out of the shticks of, like, the tropes right, that same. are super popular. Because I'm going... Because there is, like, this whole, like, fantasy genre that's, like, yeah. I know. Uh, well, one of the ones that I almost started reading is, like, a reimagining of Dracula. So, it's, like, the story of one of Dracula's oh. lovers. And I'm, like, how do... Am I... Like I have watched Vampire Diaries and I've seen some legacies. I guess I could probably fall into the vampire trope. That seems okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but I'm I'm not lying. I'm it's not gonna so lie. I dig, I dig the fairy thing. Like it's you know, mm-hmm. it's been fun. I'm enjoy. I'm obviously enjoying it. I am, according yeah. to Goodreads, I'm like eighty percent done with the oh. second book. It's a sick book. Uh, a court it? of a court of mist and fury. <laughs> So I'm almost done. I have the third book waiting. And I also, because Barnes and Noble is also a trap. Yes, it Every is. time I go in there, I was like past this table that's like, oh, buy one, get one half books. Yep. And so then I bought two more Riley Sager books. Oh my God. Which ones did you get? 
Ah, it was the last time I lied. <gasps> that one was one of my favorite. That was my favorite before Home Before Dark. Was it? Yes, I, I loved that one. Was. It again the tropes. It's all about the tropes. It's you know, right. Well, no, it sounded really compelling. And... That's why I was yeah, like, it's "Good, you'll like that one." Yeah. Uh, yeah. The last time I lied, mm-hmm. that was definitely one of them. Um, uh, know, lock every door. One? Final Girls. Final. Oh, I liked Final Girls. That was the that one. one. Yeah, that was. I good. saw the cover. I was like, Final Girls. <laughs> I was say I have an order in which I like them. So you you made good. Ah, choices. you made good. Okay, choices. it was just I, I mean, read the all back. Good. None of them are bad. Yeah, it was. It was like there were several of his books on that buy one get one half table, and I was like, oh well, it's a deal. I'll yeah. just. <laughs> yeah, I am. That's, that's one of those arm, authors please. that I now lurk. To see when their next book comes out, and I write it down on my calendar because right, I'm which I also person. need to finish because you know I finished Snatch as Burning. Mm-hmm. I need to finish that trilogy. So next is like the Bone Tree from Greg Isles, <sighs> which I, I had. I, this is another funny story. I found it. I was cleaning my room and I found the book, The Bone Tree, which is the second mm-hmm. one in the trilogy to Natchez Burning, and I have no recollection of buying that book. I feel like... I don't know where it came from. I remember, <laughs> I don't remember. us... When, uh, I mean, it's been... Maybe. Uh, I remember you getting it, because you were like, oh, yeah, you you got me the... Because I got you the first one from... Maybe that's signing, what it was. And you were like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get the second one. I'm like, yeah, so good, so good. Um, so now it's like, I also need to re- get on that one, mm-hmm. too. So it's like, I have so many books lined up for this I, year. I, do I just suggest. hope I can keep up. Yeah. I hope I can keep up with this energy of continuing to read because Absolutely. I've forgotten how great it was. I, just... I, I suggest uh, interspersing lots of fairy smut between them because they're heavy. They're heavy books and you need. Oh, right, 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 right. Like I was always like, I need to read Harry Potter now. Every time. Right. One, Which like... I think that's what I think that might have been wise because it's... I had read Natchez Burning and then that shark smut novel, which was I mean, it had heavy. It had heavy right. like undertones to it, too. You know, you're talking like sexual assault and yeah see i'm not here you for know that. yeah you have to everyone has to be on the up and up and agree that this is right this that that's okay yeah so but um so then it was like reading yeah and then you know then my sister-in-law gave me akatar and i just like mm-hmm. devoured it because <laughs> i was like this is so good i need to know what happens <laughs> Anyway, yeah, think, that's my judge. That's my judge. Is I got out of reading and now I'm back into it. And I'm just like, why did I? Why did great. I let this go by the wayside? That's great. I love that. Um, I I think I'm gonna just try and sprinkle in some smut books because they go much faster. And uh, you they, know, that's true. If you follow me in Goodreads, guys, uh, you'll notice that I add them. We'll probably start adding them in like April when everyone has given up Goodreads and reading and they don't pay attention anymore. <laughs> And I just do like a quick right. ad before I finish another book. So that way it just is in the list. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get over myself. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I <laughs> I, I did not pick the book that I should have picked for my first foray into this. But that's okay. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Jesuit <laughs> priests who are actually sadists and complicated characters. Lord, good <laughs> God. So much. Anyway. It was so funny. Anyway. Anyway. So, what are you judging? Sorry, that was an incredibly long judge. Or oh, no, that's fine. It actually <laughs> kind of leads into my judge this week. So, uh, I was I told you about this already, Claire, but for New Year's Eve, so, like, Spencer and I didn't feel our greatest for the holiday. Right. Um, I got, I picked up, like, a, a minor stomach bug at work. Um, like, I didn't, like, go throw up or anything, but, like, I just felt gross and yeah, like uh, it may it ended up like <clears throat> triggering a migraine i just felt crummy for a couple of days and so um by new year's eve i'd started to feel better but still wasn't like 100 super happy yeah. bouncy buoyant whatever. right um and, I, and spencer i think was starting to feel bad because he felt bad for a couple of days after that <laughs> sorry um yeah so we rang in the new year watching random tv channels on our smart tv that has like weird (laughs) built-in channels yes uh so for some reason i don't really know why we we started watching the bob barker era of the price is right (laughs) and like we'd seen a couple of episodes before but we just kind of got pulled in watching some 
because this is like the late seventies, early eighties, and we're just like yeah. a car was like seven thousand dollars. Like our brain can't process, right? That, I'm like, what? And just the you're like, what is happening? Really here? gross. Like what timeline? What timeline is this? You're like, like this well, is. <laughs> And so, like, we all grew up watching Price is Right on, like, our sick days. It would come oh, on at, like, noon or something. We'd watch an episode or two. But they were 90s versions because that's when we were kids. Um, yes. And so I never processed as a kid, and I don't think it was as prevalent in the 90s versions, just how misogynistic Bob Barker is he's not dead although in my timeline my original timeline he's fucking dead okay i remember him dying i remember Drew wait Carey. he's not dead no he's not dead how old is he 99 he's i was gonna be like is he like 200 years old like but he is God. not dead and i remember i remember him dying i remember drew carey tweeting out about it because i was still on twitter back when this happened which is a long time that ago. sounds familiar like i feel like and i feel, I'm, feel like i'm tracking with you thank on this. you and like i bring this i feel up, like you and i are in the same timeline <laughs> i bring this up and there's always like a couple of people who have that memory as well like yeah i remember drew carey i'm doing like a whole spiel and a whole thing like, yeah yes. and he's not dead he's alive so well everyone there's a man de- there's a real life mandela effect for you but so like it's so weird watching all of these women come up and they would like kiss him on the cheek and it was weird and he would I always like that. touch them or say things mm. that was weird. but so like it just it was it's incredibly right weird You're to like, watch mm, from, from yeah. 2023 to look back and be like <clears throat> Ugh, okay right but in one episode <laughs> from 1983 because they happened to mention something about the years and anniversary or something gotcha um they had one of the the contestants who gets called up is a guy who is a boy scout troop leader troop master whatever they called i don't leader i think yeah i don't uh, i don't know Um, uh... but so like they have because he gets called up and so they have like a little back and forth as they do between Uh the new contestant and bob barker and so bob is like you know, if I give you two sticks, can you and can you rub them together and make a fire? And he was like, "No, no, not really." He's like, "I'm I'm pretty good with knots. I can make some knots." And Bob was like, "Well, what do you do out in the woods? You know, to stay warm?" And he goes, "Body heat." And then they laugh about it. And Spencer and I both just <laughs> look at each other like, "This is the early '80s. None of the stuff had come out yet about like all the pedophiles and the boys." <laughs> and we were just like. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And like I wish I wish I had written down his name because it was a it was because before they had done that, like they had their first name on their name tag. Yeah. But Bob had asked about his last name because apparently it's the same last name as some other famous person in the eighties that I'd never heard of. And so he spelled it because it spelled different. And so, like, I could have looked it up to see if he happened to also be like a pedophile. Because that like would have been like icing arrest- on the cake or whatever. Like, Holy if he had gotten arrested man. for that, oh my gosh, that would have been something. Like, but, like, like, like was- back when they realized that what's his face? What was it? Rodney Alcala was on the dating game right, or whatever. Right. Like, oh, we got the serial killer on the dating game. <laughs> but it was so, it was this really surreal moment where Spencer and I, because we're just sitting there and then the line happens is like, body hit and they laugh and we just both went <laughs> you all were like oh shit and Spencer's like they didn't know I was like no they didn't know oh my gosh that's crazy but we also were flipping back and forth to another channel that is random game shows that none of us have ever heard of um for example, did you know that Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air had his own game show? No, exactly. I don't think I did. Why would you know that? Um, or that Ken Jennings used to be on a game show where he would try and is like a trivia show. Is like he would compete with someone and try and beat them. At which point the game show won. But if the person beat Ken Jennings and they won, like it, it had a different name other than beat Ken Jennings, but. <laughs> but that's basically, yeah, basically what, what it was. It was. <laughs> um, and I was like, the fuck is this? And there's all these weird, like, uh huh, B, C, D actors that you've never, ever heard of. Right. <laughs> that are 
posting, posting these, these game, shows. game shows that you've also never heard of. And then the most magical thing happened, Claire. A game show came on called Baggage, hosted by Jerry Springer. And what is weird when you mention this, I don't know why I never told you about this, but I've seen it. Wait, I have seen like I hilarious and I cannot remember like, who for who the life of me sh- introduced it to me. But I remember sitting there and we watched like several episodes because it is a dumpster fire. It is the most fucking of the most epic proportion show that has it ever is. existed. I mean, it I is. just I died. Um cuz so if you haven't seen it and you probably haven't, nor should you. Um the premise <laughs> is that it's sort of like it'll a melt your brain. dating <laughs> game and so yes. they'll have um a contestant essentially come and they and they then will choose from three people to go out on a date with. Uh, and they make this decision based on their baggage. So they have three sizes of baggage, and they open each it's suitcases, and they open each suitcase to reveal baggage. So essentially, round, red flags. Yeah. Essentially, red flags about themselves so is like, basically. In the first round, they <clears throat> open their small one, and it's just like a conversation of like, oh, blah blah, give them a chance to kind of just explain or whatever, blah blah blah. Second round, they mix up the medium size baggage and. The person just has to eliminate one, not knowing whose it is, you know, which one is too much baggage for them. And so at that point, there's two contestants left. Um, They reveal their big baggage and the contestant will or the person will choose one of the two, at which point that person has to reveal their secret baggage and the contestant can decide whether or not it's worth going on a date with them after all. Yes. And so it's it's. It's Jerry Springer level. It's always like, I like my girls completely waxed, or the last person I did right. was half my age, or um, one was like, I I live in a house with eight other men, or like, it's just weird. And I think there was one that was like, if I remember, it was it was like to the level of like, I slept with my best friend's husband uh-huh. the night before they got married stuff like yeah. that like it is it's, like yeah it's very jerry springer um and so like they're they're all pretty horrible like at it yes they are but my favorite because like we watched one and we were like the fuck are we watching um <laughs> and we watched You're another like, oh, one God. and we're kind of going back and forth between it and the price is right at that point because we're like because it has fake commercial breaks mm. Because there aren't right. really oh, commercials. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really TV. But at one point, we weren't going to watch it anymore. But then it's this guy who used to play Prince Charming at Disneyland <laughs> is like the, <laughs> the main guy. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> and the three contestants are triplets. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... We have to. You're like, watch no, them. we we have to watch are, this. Because they they all look the same. I mean, like they they they're triplets. They're identical, um, and like their baggage was insane and hysterical, <laughs> and so like we watched it, and it turns out that Prince Charming's secret red baggage was that uh, he dances at a at a male strip club, <laughs> like, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, but then you're like, oh gosh. Then the other day, we watched it again randomly because it was on, and like the 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 it was a woman and it was three guys and they were all hot garbage and they were all horrific in their own ways. Um, so we get to where she has picked someone, and so she's revealing her baggage to to the guy, and they again they have a chance to say no, I can't. That's too much baggage. I I don't want to. And so she reveals her baggage, which could have been that she had lost like fifty thousand dollars in online poker, or that what was oh god I don't remember the other one. Um, it was something else that was just as like normal and whatever. Oh, that um, she she her last relationship was a sugar daddy. Oh okay. <laughs> or the one that it turned out to be. So this is what it was that she had been abducted by aliens twice shut up, shut up. oh twice. my god <laughs> and <laughs> and the guy was like i'm fine with what? that baggage and i'm like the fuck what 
Oh no! It was so <laughs> fucking ridiculous. I died. So, oh my god! All that to say, guys, if you're having a bad day and and you're not feeling <laughs> good about yourself, or you're just you know maybe you just feel like you're not good enough, or that the world is against you. Just remember, Jerry Springer has a show in which people compete to go on dates with other people who have really fucking ridiculous baggage. <laughs> you could be one of them. It's all the red flags. All the red. That's really all what, of them. It should have been called all the red flags and not baggage. It should have been. <laughs> but that is that is my judge. That's nice. That's hilarious. Because uh. Yeah, I cannot remember for the life of me who showed me that show. Like, I don't, I don't know how they found it, but I remember watching several episodes of it, and it you was just like, stop oh my it gosh, you can't. And you're just like, it is. how are they going to choose any of these people? So you wait to see who they choose, and then you're just like, you made a bad choice. I mean, not like any of them are good, but. Right, right, definitely. That's, that is an excellent <sighs> judge. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It exists. Also, thank you for bringing to my attention that Bob Barker's not dead. Oh, by the way, Bob Barker's still not dead. Who knew? I just, yeah. Lord. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. On to our actual main topic of the show. Whoops. That took a while. So, sorry, that was ridiculously long. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our topic today is cults. Yes. Uh, I go first this week, and I have brought to you a magical cult that I only learned about earlier this year. It is called Remnant Church. Claire, do you know Remnant Church? I do. Mm-hmm. I watched the documentary. So, for those, however, of you- I will say April and I were unknowingly introduced to some of the aspects of this yeah like it as comes children up. it comes up in through church story, so. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. so it's like once like i was watching the documentary and it gets into this part of it and i'm like oh, holy <laughs> shit i know what this yeah. is like i remember this my mother did that mm-hmm. you know it was just like there was so much that i was like oh god this is so wrong on <laughs> so many levels <laughs> anyway Okay, so, but yes, I watched the documentary, so let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, so my story is about Gwen Shamlin and the Remnant Church located in Brentwood, Tennessee, a suburb, a suburb, suburb, that word suburb. sounds weird when I say it now, of Nashville. Yes. So let's, let's talk about Gwen, shall we? Yes, let's. I mean, you can't talk about her and not talk about her hair either. No, you cannot. <laughs> Though, lots of pictures. Lots of pictures. Yeah, uh, right. So Gwen Shamlin was born February 18th. What? Yep. Why? Why do I have to share a birthday with a nutter? <laughs> uh, anyway. <sighs> I didn't know that. I, I know. didn't know that's when she was when born. When I saw that, I, I literally put in parentheses, OMG, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> it just it just shows that you too could be a, a cult leader if you wanted to be Claire. I could be. That's true. But she was Do born February no. 18, 1955. And she was raised in a conservative family. They went to a very conservative church. It was a church of Christ. Um, they are very yes. traditional in that you know, women can't lead or partake in leadership of the church because God is only for men. Men yes. only. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very important you know that. Uh, even from like a young age, she was really interested in health and religion. Um, so it wasn't really a surprise that she ended up going to college studying. They called it dietetics. Which I don't think that's a real word anymore, but what do I know? Right. Uh, yeah. Nutrition, basically, uh, at University of Tennessee. So mm-hmm. she went to school. In 1986, she decided to combine her love of health and religion and created the Way Down Workshop. Now, yes, Claire, <laughs> I know you know, and you know I know, <clears throat> but for everyone else out there, the Way Down Workshop 
is essentially using your faith in order to lose weight. Yay. And it's also just, I mean, they make it sound like it's this mystical thing, but it's really just counting yeah. calories. Well, it's actually, it's, it's nothing not magical. Even, yeah, it's, um, so the idea, according to Gwen, behind the Way Down Workshop, is to transfer over your love of food to a love for God. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it became a huge success because it was the 80s and the 90s and everyone was obsessed with losing weight because at that point, processed food had taken over and we all gained a shit ton of weight. Yes. So it was a huge success. Well, and plus for churches, this was mm -hmm. like one of those like, you know, a, there were not many like faith-based weight yeah, loss there, programs there were, out there. So this was... Well, there were several, but they were... They weren't this one essentially like there right. different things so it was the thing that was happening in churches so when this came out uh people in churches really latched onto it um essentially it's biblical studies that help you know focus your love on, on god and to, you know the idea being to help you lose weight uh but honestly it's basically just intuitive eating the whole concept is eat only when like your stomach is growling and you're hungry and you stop as yes. soon as you're satisfied. Like, there weren't any kind of restrictions, which a lot of diets had, which made it appealing. Because you could eat chocolate or pizza or whatever you wanted, but you had to... But it to... was like the second that you felt, like, not even full. Yeah. It was like the second that you were no longer, your stomach wasn't growling. Mm -hmm. It was like, stop and quit eating. Um, And it was, you know, like, you're supposed to, like, pray your hunger away, as far as I can tell, but whatever. Right, yeah. Well, plus she had this whole crazy, like, she was, like, in love with God yes. and in love with Jesus. And it's just, like, that to me is creepy. Yeah. It like, was, I'm just, like, meh. It, it gets, so, like, when, when you start here, like, on the surface level, it's, like, oh, you know, it's it's intuitive eating. It's, you know, refocusing your attention on God and what he wants for you. Fine, fine. Th those, all, those things all sound fine. Like, not for me, because I think it's garbage. But... Right. Like, 80s, 90s, like, I, I remember, like you said, we had those groups at our church. We had, of course, women, because that's the only people who have to lose weight. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I remember the, the groups, they, they had a name. I wish I could remember what it was, because they didn't call it, cause they did different things. They weren't always doing, like, right. a way down workshop, but yeah. they had, like, a, a little group that, that met, that that was, like, Bible study and talk, you know, kind of accountability, mm -hmm. helping support each other as they're, you know, trying to, to lose weight. Because it's hard. It's fucking hard, man. Yeah. Um, in the late 90s, she ended up writing the best-selling book, The Way Down Diet. Um, that in it, she actually says, if you focus your attention on God and prayer instead of the magnetic pool of the refrigerator it's amazing how free you'll be <laughs> oh man i forgot i didn't tell you so my sources for this magical yes. story uh obviously the hbo documentary the way down god greed and the cult of gwen shamblin but also from all that's interesting and you'll love this claire an SBC Life article from the year 2000. Nice. Southern Baptist Convention. Oh. SBC. Uh. Satan incarnate. <laughs> but so, you know, she she had found a lot of success with the Way Down Workshop and writing the books. That, again, thousands of people in hundreds of church, churches across the country, even into Canada. It was incredibly successful. Um, people were having some real successes, you know, doing intuitive eating and focusing on God and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and she did not rest on her successes. So let's just say that. Mm -hmm. In 1999, Gwen wanted more freedom. She wanted more than just her little diet book. And so she started Remnant Church, the church that is located in Brinswood. Now, allegedly, 
She claims that she started the church because God told her to. As they all do. Yes. <laughs> Is it not true? Uh, God spoke to Gwen and told her to start this church. And there's a lot of controversy around it. Um, oh, yes. She uh-huh. was at a big, like, way down convention, like, huge, I don't know, like, jamboree. I don't know what else to call it. Um, right. <laughs> in which she announced it. And in her announcement, uh, denied the Trinity, uh, yes. basically mm-hmm. called the the church or named it Remnant Church in reference to the idea that there's only a remnant of people that are truly saved, uh, that are truly God's right. chosen. And she is basically claiming that that is her and her church. And it caused a huge controversy. So, like, half of the people in the audience, you know, clapped, and half of the people freaked the shit out because it's, you know, hypocrisy or no, not hypocrisy. yeah. And it like went against everything that you've been taught as so you know somebody who is in Christianity. Uh-huh. It's so the, you know because it's like the basis, you know, is the Trinity that you cannot. So the the yeah. Southern Baptist Blasphemy. Convention. <laughs> Um, life article from 2000. I'm going to read this like a small excerpt. Mm -hmm. The controversy intensified after Shamblin posted a weekly email communique to her followers on August 10th. As a ministry, we believe in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I had to turn my page. Sorry. However, The Bible does not use the word trinity, and our feeling is that the word trinity implies equality in leadership or shared lordship. It is clear that the scriptures teach that Jesus is the Son of God, and God sends the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not send God anywhere. God is clearly the head. Uh, which is a big <clears throat> fucking problem for uh, basically all of, all of Protestantism, because other than right. I think the, right. the Latter Day Saints, I think are the only ones who who don't uphold the Trinity as right. Uh, my favorite. As equal. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, <clears throat> three in one. Like it's yeah, they're not separate entities; they're the same entity. Mm-hmm. Yes. So like it it caused it caused quite a big deal. Um so a lot of churches quit having the workshop and they they called her a heretic. Like I mean she basically was right. Out. She was super super out out. Um uh, but that's fine because she doesn't care. <laughs> She's like I do what I want. <laughs> right? Uh but starting her new church was Started a lot of drama for her as well. Um, so at this point, the Way Down Workshop was its own business. Uh, she had lots of employees that dealt with talking with churches and answering phones mm-hmm. and selling materials and shipping materials. And she required them to attend her new church, Remnant Church, which you can't do. Right. That's illegal. So they sued her. And in the process... Didn't she also not pay them? Oh, there's a whole lot of that. There was a... Yeah, like, she was not paying people adequately or not at all or... In the, but in the process of that lawsuit, um, she had to give a deposition. And in that deposition, she said... this When you start to, to really see the cray crazy that's there... Um, right, Yes. <laughs> Because in that deposition, she starts to compare American eating habits and her weight loss solutions to the Holocaust. Yes. (laughs) Saying that, you know, Jews lost weight in concentration camps by eating less. They all lost weight. So it's that's the that's the key. We all need to eat less to lose weight. And like the guy in the doing the deposition is like, uh, "Are you equating American eating habits to the Holocaust?" I know, (laughs) right? Well, they all lost weight. You're like, this is so cringy. She just has no. She just no no concept that that is horrific. Right. (sighs) Lord. 
Um, I think she should have been committed just based off of that alone. And so, <laughs> like, well, ultimately, the like the the church is where it gets super super culty. Um, again, yes. the weight loss thing, like it, it was a money maker, but the church gets really scary. Uh, within the church, basically, the message is: if you love God enough, then then you don't you know, you can get rid of all of your, your problems. Like, you know, you, you'll easily be a, a thin, healthy weight. If you love God enough, nothing bad will happen to you. If you're obeying God and you love him enough, you don't need drugs right. for things like depression. If you love God enough and you're obeying him. Right. And people who really struggled with depression you know, are, are being told to give up, you know, you don't need your drugs. You don't need therapy. You just need to love God and obey God enough. And even as they're trying to follow that and giving up their drugs and they're calling their yes. leadership for <clears throat> help, it's like, you know, I still feel really bad. They're told to just pray their demons away and that if they're totally obedient to God, then they won't be depressed anymore. Like it, it gets really dark really fast. Yes. Um it's i mean yeah you're just like you sit there and watch it you're just like oh god this is awful i mean yes the, it's like the these churches who are like oh you can tell. just pray the gay away mm -hmm. you know pray your mental illness away those kind of you know commands are so harmful <laughs> it's just you know i just blows my mind that people still feel like that's how mm -hmm. you can deal with certain things in your life. It's just like, oh, just pray harder. And it's like, well, no, and, and that's no, no. Their message don't. is that if everything for you isn't perfect, then it's because you're not right. being obedient. You're not. Or it's something that you did. And it are, doesn't yeah. matter how, you know, how you live. Your, it's, there's something you did some way, somewhere. Well, and they are. caused you this pain. Scarily obsessed with obedience um, to the point that. You know, even though this church is led by Gwen, Gwen is the main person of this church. Yes. All the other people who are really doing stuff that are on stage and are leadership are really men. Uh, like they may have mm -hmm. wives that they claim are part of leadership, but really just the men. Right. And so women are encouraged to be submissive. I mean, except Gwen, of course. Right. She's like the only one. Yeah. But, like, she says things like husbands are kind like Christ and that women are to be submissive to their husbands and children are to obey their parents. Like, it's very this. Yes. And so, like, there were stories of people who, like, as women, they were, like, going through a hard time and they just, they weren't wanting to have sex as much as their husbands were wanting to have sex and they just, you know, needed to not you know they're just having a hard time and their leadership counsel to them was well just let your husband have sex with you just let him yeah um and like one of the people in the documentary was like you know it's basically rape i didn't want to but i was right told yeah by my you know religious leadership leader that i needed to just let him um and that essentially if women didn't do whatever their husbands wanted, like their husbands could basically rat them out to leadership, like can complain. Yes. My wife isn't having sex with me enough or whatever. And they would get counseled. <laughs> right. AKA emotionally manipulated. Right. Um, out of fear of being kicked out of the church and being bended by their family or, you know, going to hell and all the insanity. Uh, one woman who was really struggling was told by leadership to go off birth control because it was restricting her libido, essentially. Um, and her church leader was like, it's fine. You won't get pregnant. It's fine. Just go oh, off birth control. God. And so Ugh. she, of course, did get pregnant. Yes. And the church leadership then chastised her for getting pregnant. They're like, well, why did you get pregnant? Like you told me to do this. Right. It's just, uh, just watching it and you bringing it back up now. Yes, it's like, it makes is, me mad all over is again. It's like horrific. Uh, um, it is just like the, the absolute garbage that they put him through. And then, you know, children are to be obedient. So they 
suggest basically beating your children. Um, at one point, Gwen specifically says like a glue stick. I'm thinking like the long, hard, like uh-huh. the glue gun yep. glue sticks. Like the really, the, the, the really, really long, long ones. ones. Yeah, not like the little short right. ones, but the, you know, that like have a little bit of spring in them that, yep. That, that mm-hmm. you should, you know, spank your kids with that. Um, or your hand, or a spoon, or a belt, or whatever it is that makes you happy. And at least one child died as a result of this. And I say at least one, because mm-hmm. I have questions. Right. So, so many questions. <laughs> Joseph and Sonia Smith beat their son to death. Uh, they were, I don't, I don't know, cult members? I don't know what you call people. They, they, they listened to Gwen. Uh, they followed the church. They were church members. They were part of the congregation. <laughs> and there are audio recordings of Gwen. It's like a phone-in thing. Like she, People are phoning in, asking her yeah. questions. And there's a recording of her saying to Sonia that they need to use harsh discipline with their son because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. Right. Now, Joseph and Sonia Smith were sentenced to life in prison, as they should be, because their son died um, as a result mm-hmm. of them beating him. Like, in the cops right. that, that were in this documentary were like, he was bruised and beaten everywhere except for the palms of his hands and the soles of his feet. He had injuries everywhere. Um, they had locked him in a box, and when he was trying to pop up or whatever, they slammed the lid closed, and so his head trauma contributed to... Is that yeah. like he just it was they said it was one of the worst things they had ever seen. But the church didn't you know, the the police went to investigate church stuff, but they didn't really have enough to to do anything about the church. Right. So the church was not held culpable, though it should have been. But oh, absolutely. disturbing and disgusting. Absolutely. The church paid for the legal defense of Joseph and Sonia Smith. They paid for their defense and they paid to to get the case appealed to try and get a new trial. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Right. You're just like, oh, geez. So their son, uh, Joseph, that they murdered, uh, was like seven or eight, I believe. Yeah, he was a small kid. Yeah. But 11 weeks before he was murdered, their two-year-old son, Malik, also died. 11 weeks before. And it got And I'm sure that obviously it got classified to them. as a SIDS case. But I'm mm-hmm. like, are you sure? But was it? Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, but was it? So, Gwen and Remnant believe that children have to give total obedience to their parents. They are to do and she says this to the children in one of the the video clips. Uh huh. The first time your parents tell you to do something, you do it. Or else you're denying God and you will be punished in hell for all eternity. And I'm like, away with these words. are little fucking <laughs> children. And like, I'm not they don't talking... know the concept of like heaven and hell, when, right? And I'm just... not talking like eight to 12 year olds. Like, they're hitting like two-year-olds like yeah two to like five six-year-olds that you're just like they don't have well, like, any kind one, of uh, one of the people are talking about how or there's like pictures of bruises on a little girl's leg i think it's a little girl a, a small child's leg because they wouldn't lie still during their diaper change right yeah and i'm like what the hell they're a child i know you're just like <laughs> Boy. Ugh. um and it's it's really bizarre because like so they do this and the children of course you know if you get beaten you 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 know do exactly what you're told because you know you're being abused and you're tortured and you do your best to not have to experience that so they right. end up being turned into these like submissive robots that just are all, that are perfect all the time and it's really weird especially in the documentary you see a lot of pictures of the kids like at church things and they're dressed in these weird like white old like victorian style lacy dresses oh yeah yeah um, just like what the the little boys are dressed up as well uh one of them said they look like little little lord fauntleroys or whatever yes it's just, uh-huh it's eerie <clears throat> um there's one where it's like a choir scene i think it's in like the first episode 
And like, so all of, they're all dressed in these like super Victorian lacy looking dresses. And all these little girls have like my color bright red lipstick. Like I'm wearing bright red right now. Right. And uh-huh. I'm like, she's six. Why do you have lipstick on that child? Right. You're just like, this is not appropriate. It, it's just, it's <laughs> weird and bizarre. So obviously in any church, people leave. Things happen and you decide, no, oh, this isn't the church for me, you know. <laughs> right. Maybe I, you know, maybe you're moving for a, a job or whatever, but not this church. Um, it's really hard to leave because when people want to leave, they get threatened. Especially if like one spouse wants to stay. So like yes. uh-huh. if there is a divorce, which they really hated for the longest time, you weren't allowed to divorce, but if there was one. Um, the parent who left would be harassed almost by like lawyers and private investigators or whatever, because the parent that stayed in the church had the church and all of their legal and all of their money to try and make sure that they kept custody of the children, that they would yes. stay mm-hmm. in that creepy ass church. <clears throat> uh, anyone who did leave would be shunned by anyone who is still in the church. They just wouldn't be spoken to anymore. Done. I think that's what was so sad for me watching that documentary is there were several people who had, you know, these friendships and these really good relationships and then it was just like something happened. Wasn't there, was that the one I was watching where one of the guys was gay? Yes. And he came out and then it was just like complete, like turn their back on him. People that he had, you know, talked to and gone to their homes and been invited to all these things and all of a sudden it was just like nothing like that i mean you talk about ghosted complete ghosting and that is also to me just terrible and horrific that you would turn your back on somebody so easily for coming out as gay or just deciding that you want to go to a different church and i mean that's stupid several people who said that they were shunned or basically forced to to leave because they gained weight yes uh uh-huh and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Um, the church also is more than just a church. So Remnant is actually lots of things. They have a real estate company and a financial planning company, um, a car service. Mm-hmm. And they have something called Exodus Industries. It is plumbing, um, AC, electrical. And they really are insular in that they try and get, keep members using services provided by their members. So that helps keep you in as well. Because then it's like, well, if I leave this church, then all of the people who come to my salon or whatever, you know, I, I've lost all those clients. I, I don't have income anymore. Yes. So it's it's this whole weird self-perpetuating you're you're trapped and that's that's how you know it's cold now we're gonna go back to to gwen because she's the leader of this cult and she's the one that says all this shit because yes it all comes from her it, yep. it all comes from her and my favorite thing we haven't talked a lot about it yet but like as the time goes by her hair gets bigger and bigger <laughs> yes, and bigger and bigger and my question is, but, what's in there? Is that where she hides the Holy Spirit? Because like, apparently, <laughs> and like, I mean, because there's a whole bunch like the what is it like the bigger the hair, the closer to God or, or some bullshit like, like, that. like, like that, just, like that. Some... Well, and like, she looks awful, like awful, awful. Oh yeah. Um, oh, we'll get to it. Okay, so back to we'll, we'll throw up photos mm-hmm. because it's ridiculous. You're yeah, just I'm, like, how does that even? Just gonna, like, there's not enough hairspray on this planet. Slowly, so what, by the time we get to the end, you'll see her biggest hair. It'll be great. It's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so Gwen Shamblin was married um, first to David Shamblin. And they were married for about 40 years. And he was around for the Way Down Workshop and the beginning of the church, and the creation of the church. And he was very visible uh, in the late 90s when everything was getting started. But as time went on, he appeared less and less, um, especially because he he himself is overweight. He never, I mm-hmm. guess, wasn't obedient enough to God. I don't know. 
right uh, and so like he, his they, wife she kept him out of public view because he did not he was a visual rejection of her message i think and so oh like, yeah he was around less and less and that's not on brand because you can't be overweight right but during this time you know she's she had people who wanted to get divorces and, and she would be like, no, like you need to make it work. You know, you got to work through this, you know, love God, be obedient to God. He'll fix your marriage. So people were stuck in marriages that they were miserable in because they felt like they weren't allowed to get divorced. Yes. That was, that was her take until Gwen got divorced. Right. (laughs) You're just like, Oh, the hypocrisy. Yes. Well, and like a lot of people felt that way. It's like, Oh, wow. You right. can get a divorce, so I guess now it's okay if I do. Uh, right. In that first marriage, though, she had two children, uh, Michael Shamblin and Michelle Shamblin. So, Michelle Shamblin now goes by Elizabeth, which is her middle name. It's, it's Michelle mm-hmm. Elizabeth Shamblin. Uh, growing up, like through school and everything, her name was Michelle. Uh, she, one of her friends was on the documentary and talked a lot about how you know, great everything was, and how, you know, she used yeah. to hang out at the house, and like, it was all fine. Um, And she and Michelle were super close, but then Michelle starts going by her middle name Elizabeth, because Elizabeth is her, quote, unquote, sinless name. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Elizabeth ended up marrying uh, Brandon Hannah, and she has always been like her mother's biggest fan, truest disciple or whatever. And right. You know, they <clears throat> some suspect that uh Gwen actually chose Brandon to be Elizabeth's husband, that it wasn't like Elizabeth fell in love or anything. It was like this is the one Right. Thing. Um so they of course got married, they had kids, and then tragedy struck. And their five-month-old baby died suddenly. Again, SIDS. And I'm like, but was it? Are we beating our five-month-old? Because I don't know. I mean, seriously. And no one quite knew what to do with that. Because in the church, bad things only happened if you're being disobedient to God. Right. And so it was really weird right after it happened. Because nobody was talking about it. No, No one said anything. No one acted like anything bad had happened um well didn't they keep it remember they kept it like under wraps initially like it was just like oh pray for healing but he had already died and it was like this whole big like you know smoke and mirrors kind of thing Mm -hmm. when the child passed away it was very bizarre it was just like who who does that like no so suddenly they started having they started calling families in to have like counseling sessions with leadership and it wasn't again counseling and it ended up right. being these families were being grilled as to what they had been doing because they're trying to find who had been disobedient who had caused the death of yes. the baby because it couldn't possibly be the shamlins or the hannahs it had yes. to be people in the church that did it <clears throat> and so apparently that is when everything went bad for elizabeth she stopped being a semi-positive bubbly person and that's when she started losing drastic amounts of weight like she looks like hot garbage like she has like yeah, her hair she's so thin she's yeah and like her hair you, you're like she's anorexic you can tell because her hair is falling yep. out it's so thin mm-hmm. and so limp and she looks awful uh but then there's michael shamlin who is the oldest child and has pretty obviously been passed over in favor for elizabeth because right. Michael isn't <clears throat> consistent enough. Um, he suffers from depression, which you're not allowed to have because, you know, if you love God enough, then you won't be depressed. You're anymore. not going to be depressed. Yeah, yeah. So as a result of the depression, his weight fluctuates fairly wildly. He'll be overweight. He'll lose some weight, overweight. And so anytime he's overweight, he would not be allowed on stage. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Gross. Because he's not on brand. Yep. But, as I said, Gwen divorced their daddy. And a couple of months after the divorce, in 2018, she marries Joe Lara. 
You may know him from Tarzan, but probably not because I had no idea who the fuck he was. <laughs> I don't know. He's like a, a I don't know. Is there like an F list, G list actor or something? I, right. I and so, like, he comes in and he's all like, "Oh, ha 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 ha! We're just so happy and everything's great." And she looks like a hot piece of garbage, and he's all Tarzan-y still. Like, he's got a nice body. It's fine. I started to say, he's a fairly mm-hmm. good-looking guy. Like, he's not, you know, he's built, he's handsome. Like, that's obviously why she went for him. Well, and he obviously went <laughs> for her can... for the, the money and the credit. Because he's able to do whatever he wants now. And he could do whatever he wanted. Because, like, if you compared him to her ex-husband, I mean, it's like, well, there's and, no... Well, and he, he looks the part for the message. He does. He very much does um, look the part. Joe had a daughter from a previous relationship and throughout the documentary you hear about all of the ridiculous hot garbage that the church was doing that Gwen and Joe hired you know the church paid for all sorts of private eyes and attorneys to try and keep custody of the daughter even though mommy was just fine there's nothing she's not doing anything bad or wrong and the thing that was the most disturbing to me is that she talked a lot about how when her daughter was with them she like she they couldn't talk on the phone um Mm -hmm. the daughter wasn't allowed to have friends outside of the church or do any activities outside of the church so like it was constant cult all the time yes but then we and obviously for i mean the mother was concerned yeah well she should have been yeah i kudos to her she fought hard because she did yeah and against insurmountable odds you seem to think i would think yeah Especially all the money they had backing their cause. You know, it was just... But then we get to <clears throat> May 29th, 2021. Gwen boarded a 1982 Cessna private plane at Smyrna Rutherford County Airport with her husband Joe, uh, Jennifer and David Martin, Jessica and Jonathan Walters, and her son-in-law, Brandon Hanna, so Elizabeth's husband. They were on their way to a We the People Patriots Day party to support Trump in Florida. Gross. Egg. Which is all you need to know. <laughs> gross indeed. They think yes, that's a good gross. choice. That's all you know. Um, the plane <laughs> crashed right after takeoff and everyone on board died. That's, I mean, it's sad, but like. Sorry. Yes, but yeah. The weird thing is that on this exact day, there was a wedding held at um, Gwen and Joe's estate. It's called Ashlawn. There was mm-hmm. a wedding there that day. So the plane had taken off. It had crashed. They had all died. And a wedding for one, two of their church members took place anyway. Now, highly recommend you watch the documentary because it follows the story yes. of Delaney. Um who was the bride that day uh, and how she got sucked into the cult and all of the horrific, ridiculous crap that she was like 17. So her parents are trying so hard to keep her out of this relationship. Right. But like, you know, they coached the church. People coached her how to lie to her parents. They helped her set up fake email addresses and helped yep. teach her how to delete stuff. They bought her burner phone so that she could remain in contact. Like it's, it's awful. It was ridiculous. It was really awful. Um, you feel really bad for her parents yes. watching that because it's like her parents just wanted so desperately for their daughter to be safe. But, and, yeah. You know, and it just, ugh, I, I hated it for them. But even though um, the main leadership of the church had just died in a plane crash, the wedding went on, no one was crying. No one was talking about it. And, like, 90% of the people at this wedding are from Remnant Church. Right. But, you know, the the parents of Delaney were talking. It's like everyone was just acting over-the-top happy. Like, it was very fake happy, but all, like, weird smiles and acting like nothing bad was happening. To the point that they were like, they know, right? Like, surely they know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just, like, the weirdest thing like, they got married, they're all smiling, and they laughed, and it's just like, the fuck? So, 
this happened in the midst of HBO working on the documentary, so they had to kind of revamp it a little bit because everybody yeah. died. Other than like, a, and it was like, oh, this is in the middle of what we're doing. And so, um, after that, obviously, it sent Remnant kind of grasping. Like they still had some people who were in leadership around. Um, the reins got passed to Elizabeth, who you know at that point lost her mom, lost her stepdad, lost her best friend. Her best friend was on the flight with her husband. Lost her husband because he was on the flight. So like she lost everybody really yeah she is now in charge of this church she doesn't really show up very much um according to anything that i've seen uh and and brother michael just got completely wiped away he's not there at all he's gone so the church still exists that's still very culty it's still focused on being thin for jesus which the fuck is that about <laughs> right um, and it's still bad and awful. And there's all sorts of people who have, like, after the crash, like, they finally felt like they were able to come out and say things because Gwen herself couldn't come at them. But, like, some of them talk yep. about how Gwen basically told them if they leave the church, they're cursed. Yep. And <laughs> it's just, it's awful. Um, I will leave you with this magical piece of information. On February 4th of this year, Claire... There's going to be a new Lifetime movie starring Jennifer Grey as Gwen Shamlin. Oh, God. It's called <laughs> Gwen Shamlin Starving for Salvation. Oh, my God. And I can't wait. I want to watch it. This is going to be everything. Oh, my Lord. And, like, I can't wait to see her do the hair as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Um, another weird thing that came out is that apparently Gwen filmed a pilot for a reality TV show. Yes, yes, I saw and, that. Yep. Like they showed some of the video, and when you look at her, she looks awful. Like, I mean, yep. the hair is one thing, but like if you take away the hair, she has like smudge eye things everywhere. She has like lined out lips with like a brown liner, but not filled, and she just looks. She's so thin. Well, I mean, she looks Again. like she's dying while as you're watching. It yes. just, it's obscene. But. That is my story of Gwen Shamlin and the Remnant Church cult. That's still there. That is cult leader died, but excellent. they carry on. So stay away. They from still that. are forging on. Yep. <laughs> that is excellent because that is a creepy ass cult. Well, it's that yeah, uh, it's close. It's close to home, really. Well, I mean, I mean I'm literally like what two hours from mm -hmm. it. So yeah. Well, and that <clears throat> until that documentary came out, I had no idea. I'd never heard of it. Never. I hadn't heard of the Remnant Church, but the Way Down right, Workshop right, right. stuff I had heard of, but I did not realize that all that was connected to that. Well, you know, it was like, oh, oh. We, <laughs> we have a friend who lives in Brentwood. Um, and so, like, I asked him about it, and he was like, yeah, they're a big bunch of weirdos. He's like, because they're not churchy people, thank God. Um, yeah. They're like, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's creepy. And, like, after the plane crash, like, it got really weird <laughs> really weird yeah more weird than like before. everybody got really weird and then it's, eh, i don't know so there you go jesus hey. only loves you if you're anorexic right Whew. that was a doozy it was man it was a doozy <clears throat> but it's so fascinating well claire i think this is a good place for us to stop for today since you know Culty cults always take so much longer to talk about. They do. <laughs> there's so much. They're just so exciting. Cults are so, yes. I mean, there's so much to them. Well, it's just, it's not a simple subject. Like, like, even just like, I feel like it would take an entire episode to talk about just her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, I feel like maybe we should have like a... We should throw up a meme of like what's in her hair. Yeah, I, I almost wish right. she hadn't died just so that I can you know make fun of her more because right. it's hard to make fun of people who died tragically, even if they aren't Same. good people. You're just like, yes, fine. You still don't want to like, uh, yeah. No, I get it. All right, so be sure to join us next week for our next installment of Colts, in which Claire's going to talk about. Give us a spoiler, Claire. What's it going to be? Heaven's Gate. <laughs> Aliens. Aliens and Aliens. UFOs. All right, so that must mean that it's time for 
tarot time with April a spooky spooky da 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 I'm not in a cult I like to eat <laughs> anytime I want to cause food is very yummy and Jesus doesn't care if I'm fat hey remember the song I'm a fat but but Jesus, but loves, but me Jesus loves me anyhow stop huh? Huh? I'm a fat Cow, but Just Jesus loves me. Loves me anyhow. Anyhow. If you a fat cow and, too. Yeah. No, it's like, what was it? I thought it was if you a fat cow too, Jesus loves you moo. There was something else in that was That's I'm all I remember. <laughs> Jesus loves me anyhow. Okay, I'm a fat <sighs> cow, but Jesus loves me anyhow. And I'm saying oh, to you, you if you a fat cow too, Jesus loves you. Moo. moo. One, two, three, and then there's like a verse. <laughs> Which I still remember. I was born in a barn with a, a barn with a pig, pig and a rat. And a rat. <laughs> My homeboys didn't like me because I was fat. I was made an outcast. I was made a fool. But Jesus came along and said, "This cow could be cool because I'm a fat cow." But Jesus loved me anyhow. Yeah, <sighs> see, in your face, Gwen yeah, Chamberlain. Honestly, she didn't learn the fat cow song, and it shows. <clears throat> it shows. It, it, it shows. definitely shows. <laughs> Oh, all right. Why do I remember all the words to well, that? Oh, geez. <laughs> last night, guys, I know you don't care, but last night, um, we were flipping through again the random TV channels on the TV, just out of curiosity, and the Beverly Hillbillies was on, like the old black and white. <laughs> yes. And like we flipped by it or whatever, and and I said something. I think he said like the first line or something of the song, and I was like, oh, I used to know that song, and I I sat there. And like I finally got through the first couple of sentences, and then I was like, the whole song. And whole song was like, just came back. Why? Why yep. do you know that? And I was like, I don't know. It came on after Gilligan's right. Island, I think. I don't know. Right. <laughs> like all those old theme songs, like Gilligan's Island and Beverly Hillbillies and Green Acres, and it's like I, my brain it's... holds on to lyrics. Nothing useful. But same, lyrics, man. Right. Same. I know it's awful. <laughs> all right. So this week. What do the cards have in store for us, Claire? No sword. Uh, we have the Nine of Wands. Okay, I can deal. We have the Seven of Pentacles. Okay. And then we end with the Six of Pentacles. All right. No sword. That's nice, because sword, 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 and sword was not what i wanted no nobody nobody wants, wants that. that many swords no <laughs> nobody wants that it's many like, swords ever it's like are, are you trying to kill me are you tr are you trying to kill me the answer is yes okay yes the nine of wands the nine of wands reminds us to protect ourselves we need time to heal Time to reassess who we can trust, and we need to gather our resources after we've had the bejesus kicked out of us. We did have a whole week of swords, so yes. That's Thank true, you. yeah. Thank you, Wands, for being like, it's time to take care of us and to take care right. of, you know, the things that we need to. Let's see. We also need to keep an eye on those who truly have our backs because that's an, a gift of attention. It needs attention and gratitude. Um, Let's see skim through some of the things so okay all right so we're we're supposed to protect ourselves protect the people around us that we need to protect but uh you know we're good it's good cool that's not a bad okay card. That. that's not a bad we're card. Okay that. um and so in this one like he's got his buddy who's helping him and so it's in here it, it references um that some of the strength uh, and bravery that we get is from having our friend there to help us. So, all right then. It's all right. We're going to protect ourselves. Nice. We got our friend. We got our support. We got our support. It's our support team. It's fine. It's all good. Okay. Now we're going to go to the Seven of Pentacles. And see what that tells us. Okay. This is the story of the little red hen. She planted the seeds, hoed the ground, weeded the garden, tended it, watered it, and then waited for it. 
This card is about hard work and waiting for that work to become something tangible. Oh, okay. That's fine. That doesn't sound like a bad That's fine. <clears throat> so, you know, we we work hard and we reap what we sow and it'll all be good. It's fine. That's that's a good general life lesson in and of itself. Yeah. Work hard on things and you know, don't be too impatient. Some things just take time and that's okay. We can do it. Everything's fine. So gonna end with our six of pentacles. Oh, we've had this one before. This is about generosity. Okay. So her generosity. It can be listening to a friend, being kind, being a caring lover. So not at all like the smut book I'm reading. They're not super caring. It's very complicated. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So this this week is going to be protecting ourselves and reminding that we have friends in our corner helping us, giving us strength. Uh, then it's about working hard and being patient to reap our rewards, but knowing that you know, if you work hard and, and you do it, it's all going to be okay. And then it's going to end with some generosity of us, I guess, being generosity generous to others. Maybe people generous to us. Either way, I'll take it. Not right? Bad. I mean, those aren't bad. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. So we will bring it back around to here. And since we're not doing Will of Fate, because we know that we're continuing on <clears throat> with our culty theme for next week. Right. I'm going to close this episode with a sweary affirmation for your week. Yes. Sweary affirmations for the win. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pick one at random because that's how I like to live my life. That's right. <laughs> that damn wall you hit, lean against it and let yourself fucking rest. Nice. That goes along with the first card of the week, kind of. Mm hmm. Nice. So our sweary affirmation this week is to make sure that you are self caring and taking care of yourself. That's right. Because you fucking deserve it. That's right. So yay! Take care guys. of yourselves, everybody. Yes. You That's matter too. <laughs> like, it. If if it's too much, if everything is too much, take a break. It's okay. You can tell people that you need a break. Everybody needs mental health days. Everybody needs like an hour of alone time. You just, you got to take care of you. That's right. All right. Excellent. Be sure to join us next week for part two of Cult Week with Heaven's Gate. I love right. when things I like come together. You know, when cults can come together <laughs> with aliens. That's right. It's so magical. It is. It's but fantastic. Until <laughs> next week, you can find us in all the things and all the places at Brunch and Judge. And please follow, like, subscribe, comment, participate, join us in our journeys, and send us suggestions for our wheel or any particular t stories you'd like us to do. Uh, any cults that i don't know about that i need to deep dive on please let us know yeah if you want us to do a cult. specific cult let us know yes love 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 and you can send all of those things to us at brunch and judge at gmail.com so until next time keep on brunching and keep on judging bye bye <laughs> Yes, for